He started getting indications of this by planes calling in for, who were flying there around Kodiak, telling us they were smelling ash, smelling smoke, and seeing ash in the air. What volcano just erupted? Well, we got on the horn, and we have a pretty important job along with USGS on finding out very quickly what our volcanoes have erupted. So a lot of quick looking at satellite pictures and seismometers and you name it, the tools of the trade, we could not find a volcano that erupted. And it turns out this was a case where we had strong northwest winds. We All the glaciers that you can see around the Katmai volcano, uh, you can see on either side to the, to the east and to the west, there's still glaciers there. But right over the main volcano, uh, the glaciers have eroded away and there's nothing left there. So after this long, su uh, hot, dry summer in 2003, we actually uh, were able to uncover that 1910 ash field that was deposited. And that ash field was picked up by the winds aloft and being carried downstream. So we actually had what we call a resuspension event, um, which is uh, becoming more and more common since then. This was one of the first ones that we'd ever had a chance to really document real well. But uh, talking to pilots and else, uh, others since then, this is becoming a more and more frequent occurrence as uh, glacier or as ice fields become uh, uh, open to the air. Um, climate science with respect to needs. Um, we need, there's certainly some needs in order to better prepare folks here in Alaska for dealing with um, climate change. First off, let me just say that um, dealing with climate change involves um, a, a whole host of individuals and companies and groups um, who need to be able to have good information to base decisions on. For example, if you are trying to move a village, um, let's say it's Shishmaref or Newtok, you're trying to move that village somewhere else because they're washing into the sea. <coughs> Excuse me.